Hi everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Cody Johnson and I'll be leading the webinar today. I'm an account executive here at NetSuite, focusing in on the financial planning module. Uh, a little history on me, I have a finance background, uh, spending more than 10 years in roles with responsibilities to budgeting and forecasting. So I can definitely answer your questions both from an FP&A perspective as well as a system perspective. So now I'll get into the product demonstration. So a typical landing page for a planning user is going to be the visual analytics dashboarding tool. Here we can consume data across your organization, be it financial, project, sales, really any type of data, truly agnostic of the source. We'll gather it, integrate it, store it in a data warehouse, and then visualize it here through dashboards, scorecards, bar charts, graphs, pie charts, you name it. This can be completely customized to your organization, how you want to show it, what metrics you want to show. So just for some examples here, I have some financial KPIs, such as revenue, EBITDA, maybe you want to show gross margin. If you wanted to leverage your CRM data, you can bring that in, forecast it out, and then visualize the pipeline here. Some operational data, such as production, downtime, availability. Again, this can be completely customized to what makes sense and what metrics make sense for your organization. A big benefit of this system is that it is completely customized to the user as well. So if I'm a sales manager logging in, I may only want to see my sales KPIs. I may have no need to see EBITDA or availability, really allowing that end user to focus in on what's relevant to them. A big benefit of the system is the ability to drill down into the different dimensions of your business. So for example here, if I'm that sales manager and I'm looking at my product sales by geography metric and I see 90% is made up in USA, I can drill down into the dimension of the product. Here I see product group A is the highest. Maybe I want to drill down further. And not only can I drill down, but I can also drill across the business dimensions. So for instance here, I can see what customers are buying, product group A, A1. And I can continue to drill down, enabling that end user to get down to the level of detail they need to help them perform their job. I can also take a snapshot of any dial or metric, or I can take a snapshot of the entire dashboard. And I can export this, save it, download it, or even manage it and send it out to different recipients. So if I wanted to, I could schedule this to run weekly on Monday at 6 a.m. and send to a group of recipients. So that's great visually, but what about the data behind the numbers? So if I'm looking at this expense P&L scorecard, I'm looking at my expense that shows the $6 million, I can not only drill down the different dimensions as I showed, but I can also leverage something called a cell explorer. This gives me the full picture of that value. Here's the $6 million that we saw, and here it's broken down by the different portions of my organization. Also, I could view an audit trail or drill into the transactions. Another great thing about the Cell Explorer is it shows me where I can have an impact on these values. So here it shows visible on the following sheets and it's leading me to the expense sheet. So the sheets are really the heart of the module. You can have as many sheets as you want or as few sheets as you want. Completely customizable to your organization's architecture. Just for some examples here, I've got my P&L, balance sheet, cash flow, I have operating expenses, personnel planning sheets, CapEx, travel, all the way down to a direct cash flow. Now these can be completely organized to your organization. Uh, the great thing about this system is it's meant to be maintained 
by you, the finance department, taking out the IT department out of the process and really enabling the finance department to own the module. Uh, to point out something here on my top right, I'm currently in my working budget version, but you can have as many versions as you want from last year's locked out board approved budget to as many passes and iterations to this year's budget to maybe a rolling forecast where you come in and lay actuals each month and reforecast to any what if scenarios you have you know what if you had a new product line or what if you expand internationally what if healthcare increases all you have to do is take one of your other versions model out the event and then you can compare it in dashboards or reports. Also a strategic plan. Three year and five year are common, but you could have a 20 year plan if it makes sense to your organization. So we all know how hard it is to make multiple iterations in Excel and keep track of who is working on what. With this system, you no longer have to worry about Bob having fine, you know, forecast version final.final .final on his desk. Here, everything is in one place, giving you the confidence that you're working with the latest and greatest information. Another thing I want to point out here is the level. So we can use your company's organization hierarchy from a total company level here, just as an example, to wholly owned and partially owned subsidiaries. down to different functional departments from some cost centers such as marketing, research and development, G&A, down to operations from a, regional, from a regional basis, United States, Canada, and all the way down to different departments here. I've got all my sales departments by region and all my services departments. Completely customizable to your organization's hierarchy. So if I simulate a login, say I log in as Sales Manager North, the first thing to notice is the amount of sheets I have here. They are significantly less, and that's really part of the security around it. So you only want your end users to have access to the, to the sheets and parts of the system that you want them to have impact on, really giving you the security that they're not going to change data that they shouldn't change. So if I am that sales manager and I want to do some expense planning, I can come into the expense planning sheet. Now the first thing to notice here is that it has a very similar look and feel to Excel, and that's completely intentional. We found it's a lot easier for end user adoption uh, because it's something similar to they're used to being in, in the spreadsheet environment. But the great thing about it is that we have security around it, you know, the security of the database. So not just in version control that I showed, but also with the ability to lock out cells, you don't want them to change. Now this is called a standard sheet and it's XY oriented. Here we've got our accounts going down the left side and time going across the top. A big part of the system is we want it to be as easy as possible for those end users to come in and input data. So anything in white is where we want the end user to come and input planning data. So I can come in here and just hard code like in Excel. I also have some advanced capability such as quickly copy to the end or I can even copy maybe I want to increase 5% month over month. I can quickly do that. I also have the ability to leverage historical data. So just for instance here anything in green is going to represent historical data while anything in black is going to be planning data and anything in blue text is something that I've recently changed. So I could come in here and the great thing about it being a database is I can turn in, turn on actuals by month, by quarter, by year uh, based on the version that I'm in. So a typical way we see our end users leverage this data is by using last year's historical data. So here for example, if I'm planning operating supplies, office supplies, I see that 2015 was $26,000, and I think this year is going to be close to the same. I can quickly just enter that data, and I'm going to be prompted 
how do I want to break that back? I can break it back evenly, you know, split by 12. Maybe I want to build some assumptions in how I break it back. Or I can even take advantage of seasonality and break it back proportionally using that last year's data and very quickly spread the data, spread the planning data. And I can do that very quickly. Also, I can make global adjustments if I want. So if I just grab a bunch of data, I can adjust, say, by 10% if I want. Now, the great thing here is just I just grabbed a bunch of data, but it's only going to allow me to change the ones that I have access to change, giving you that security. Another thing I can do is come in and graph the data. I can quickly graph it this way and visually look at it. Or I can even come in and turn on spark lines. I also have the ability to do some version comparison. So here I can, I can look at my actuals first budget. I can look at my forecast first budget or any what if scenario first budget, whatever I want to see. Here I've turned on those spark lines. And I even have the ability to plan by those, changing the number, just smoothing it out if I want, really giving you the flexibility to plan however makes sense to your organization. Like Excel, I can also come in here and put a comment. So for instance, here, I plan all of my maintenance expense all in March. So maybe I want to put a comment so when my budget approver comes in to approve the budget, they'll know why it's all planned in one month. For example, here, one-time budget upgrade. Now, unlike, unlike Excel, where you put a comment in a cell and it sticks to that cell, this, in this system, it flows throughout the model. So anywhere that 6330 maintenance account for March is, that note's going to stick with it. Also, we have the ability to put notes on a sheet. So instead of emailing out your assumptions to use to build the, up the budget, maybe you want to put them in here and communicate those across, such as use last year's value and increase by 5%, really giving you that collaborative environment. Another great thing lending to that co collaborative environment is if I explore this cell, giving me the full picture of the cell again, my value, my note here, one-time building upgrades, but also being able to view the audit trail. So here I can see who's changed what. Here they've changed the value, they've added a note, changed the value. So if I come in here and I see something's changed, I have the ability to look back and see who's affected what, lending back again to that collaborative environment. So that's inputting, cell, inputting data in the white cells. But as I said er earlier, these gray cells are locked out. And that's because these are being driven from other sheets. So just for instance here, there, there might be some accounts that you want to plan in more detail, uh, such as certainly salary and wages. You wouldn't want to necessarily come in and just hard code data there. So you could come in, and if I explore this cell, again, give me the full picture of the value. Here we're using a a formula to drive this. So instead of in an Excel world where we're using C4 times G5, here we're actually linking formulas to accounts. So this is grabbing the salary account from the personnel page. And depending on my permission, if I have access, I can drill down into that and see actually by employee who's contributing to that value. Now, again, this visible on the following sheets is going to show me where I can have an impact on that data. So if I go into the personnel planning sheet, this is a typical point where companies will p leverage one of their other systems. So for instance, your HR or your payroll system. That way, instead of having to rekey and manually enter all this data, we want to leverage that data from another system if we can and use that to plan. So for instance, here we have it by employee, by title, state of residence, when is their start date, when is their end date, what kind of health benefits do they have. 
Here we've got pay rate, pay raise, commission. Now, as an admin, you can decide whether to expose or hide the data from any of the end users. So pay being a sensitive spot, you may decide that you may choose to hide that from some of the end users. So if I want to come in here and I'm that sales manager and I want to plan a new hire, I can just come in here and using the drop downs. Here I'll plan an accountant in Texas. I'll give them a start date of August 1st. Uh, they may have lots of children, so we'll do the high health plan. I will give them the typical account, accountant salary. That way we can see the impact throughout the module. Uh, another great thing about here is we have the ability to allocate those expenses to different departments if we want. So for instance here, William Clark is a VP, so we've allocated his expense to three different departments, North, Canada, and UK. And we also have the ability to to do it seasonally. So if we want to allocate it to different departments different throughout the year, we have that ability. So just for this example, I'm going to allocate 100% of my new accountant to my department, quickly copying to the end. Now I'll save this sheet real quick, and then we'll be able to see the effects just by refreshing my module. Now here, Starting in August, we can see the effect of that, certainly in salary and wages, but also in taxes and benefits, such as retirement, payroll taxes. I had a one-time recruiting fee hit, new hire training, all the way down to allocations. Here, we're bucketing all of our IT costs and then dispersing it out based on headcount to the different departments. My headcount went up. So now I'm getting a bigger chunk of that allocation. Also, you have the ability to put different metrics on your sheets if you want. So just for example here, if we wanted kind of a top-down approach where we're giving them 75000 and 77000 a month uh, to spend on their budget, you could put that out while looking at how you're performing to that. Here you can see once we added the new hire, we're negative 303% in performance. So probably don't want to hire that person. Now, the way we're, we're able to drive those costs all the way throughout the module was through the use of assumptions. So assumptions and drivers can be used for many different things. Certainly you'll have financial statement drivers, such as days, such as days sales outstanding, days payable outstanding, Maybe some minimum account balances, bank balances for your balance sheet, some travel assumptions. You can have any type of assumptions. Here, I'll go into our personnel country-specific assumption to help drive a lot of those costs throughout our module. Right now, we're in our United States, but you could have different assumptions for different locations as well. Certainly, Canada and United Kingdom are going to have different tax rates than the United States. So here, for example, we've got all our different health benefits plans, all of our FUDA, SUDA, our different state SUIs. So our sales manager was able to come in very easily using the drop downs and plan a new hire. And based on these different assumptions, we had the expense flow throughout the entire model. So that sales manager isn't necessarily going to care that Texas SUI is 2.7% opposed to New York SUI being 4.1%, but we as finance do care that we get the correct expense flow throughout the model, and we get that here. Another great advantage you can take going through the assumptions is in what-if scenarios. So if I come into, say, one of my what-if scenario three, and I want to come in here and adjust my health care benefits, and maybe I want to adjust them by that 300% that I've done here. So now I have the ability to quickly come in, make a change, and then use the reports to come in and see that change. Also, if I go back into my working budget here, and go back into my expense sheet, Leveraging those different 
leveraging those different versions, if I were to come into my forecast, you can very quickly see we've laid in actuals using that green text again, and then I can re-forecast very quickly the rest of my year. And the great thing about it is I can still leverage those historical actuals if I want. So for instance, if I want to come in here and put in my 2015 number, it still allows me to break back using seasonality, but it takes those actuals into account as well. So here, for example, I still have that 26041 for the year, but it's broken it back proportionally or seasonally, even with those actuals. Another powerful feature is the ability to, if I say I'm in finance and I want to come in and change telephone expense, and I don't want to go down to each department level, I can quickly pivot this view, being that it's a database, and now I'm able to plan my telephone expense by department by every different piece of my organization, allowing me quickly to pivot the data and go in and change that if I want, instead of having to go into multiple spreadsheets or here multiple different sheets to adjust that. Part of the power of it being that database. So now if I want to go into revenue planning, I can, I can quickly do that. So I'll go into some product revenue. Here, for example, I have something called a cube sheet. So like that standard sheet that we showed, it's XY oriented, but here we've layered in the different dimensions of our business. So for instance, I'm asking my sales manager to come in and plan by unit by customer, by product, by size, by color. They're able to come in here and plan those units. And then based on those sales drivers and assumptions, similar to that personnel planning that we showed, here we've been able to build up our revenue, all of our different cogs, all the way down to a freight expense. Very quickly being able to come in and plan that, leveraging those drivers, to plan out what my revenue looks like. Now, I can also come in here and go up to the top level. So maybe I'm a sales manager and I want to come in and look at all the different regions, by all the different customers, all the different products, sizes, and colors. I can quickly come in here and get a view of my entire units, what kind of revenue I'm having, and all of my different COGS and some of my different metrics, such as gross margin. Now, the thing about it being a cube sheet is it makes it a very strong analytical tool. So if I want to come in here and just grab products and drop it in here, now I can view by product all my different units, my revenue, and all those COGS. I can also quickly pivot it again. So maybe I want to grab this customers and see by gross margin. I can quickly come in here and see by, gross mar by customer the gross margin of every different product that I offer, really allowing you to get a quick view into different pieces of your business. Now this would be very hard in Excel, you'd have to build a whole other spreadsheet, but in this environment I can just drag and drop, getting the view that I need. Now certainly from a service company perspective, you're going to have more complex items. So if I come in here, and let me quickly log in again, here I'm in a, product, a project uh, demo model. So if I want to come in and look at my expenses, here, similar to the view I had in the other demo model, to where I'm looking at all my different expenses, here I've actually laid in those different uh, dimensions of my business. So I'm looking at by project, by phase, what are my different expenses? Now, certainly personnel planning is also going to be a little more in-depth than what I showed you. So here, I have all of those different employees, as I showed before, by title, you know, my different assumptions such as health benefits, recruiting fees, I still have my start date, end dates, and my pay rates, but now I've got them designated by different plan and by different project. 
and I've got them allocated out across multiple different. So just for instance here, I've got Tony Wolf is on the design team working on project A, project B, and project C, and then taking advantage of that seasonality where project B, he was working 25% and 25% A, project B ended, so now he's working 50% on project A and 50% on project C, really allowing you to allocate those expenses uh, to the right projects at the right time. Now, if I move back into my standard model and I go to my CRM data, here I've been able to leverage my CRM data, pulling it in from a different, uh, a, a different system and then laying that in. So here, for example, I've got my by level, my different account names, what is the opportunity, what products are they going to be, and the states that I'm in. When's my expected, when's my created date, when's my expected close date, the opportunity amount, and the probability. So I can leverage this data to do a, a revenue forecast if I want based on, you know, if I wanted to use maybe anything about 75%, let's do a revenue forecast or whatever makes sense to my organization. I also have the ability to leverage that and then use that from a service forecast revenue perspective. So here again, I've got my different services by customer. What's my revenue recognition? What's my invoicing terms? And then I could come in here and as finance hard code this revenue forecast or drive it formulaically, whatever makes sense for me. Also, again, and I'll have to log in this one as well, if I want to come in here and look at engagements, being the complicated business structures that most service companies have, I may want to plan down to the service engagement level as well. So just for example here, I've got where the plan hits, what's my account name, what's my service type. I can have different uh, team sizes. And the great thing about this is I can look at this a lot of different ways. Here I've got some tables built up that my level one is a certain amount of hours, my level two is another amount of hours really building in those different drivers. And then I'm able to forecast out how many hours I'm going to need to complete those projects, allowing me to go in and look at utilization. So here, just for example, I've got my target utilization by my different segments, such as partner, manager, senior consultant, consultant, I've also got my budgeted utilization. How did we perform against that? And then a staffing needs to show me what I need to do to get back on target. So just for instance here, I'm 11 partners heavy, so I need to get rid of some partners to get back to target. Another thing I can do is leverage these different KPIs. So again, completely customizable to your organization. But just for example here, I've got some expenses by those different partner, manager, senior consultant, consultant. Also my revenue. I've got some year-over-year -year metrics and some team metrics. You know, team hours billed, as well as average employee cost per hour. Really allowing me to get into those different details of my organization. Now I can go back to my, cell, to my standard model here, and then I'll go into reporting. So I've shown expense, personnel planning, and revenue planning. So now I'm going to show you how we take advantage of those items uh, to do some reporting. So we have a very powerful reporting tool uh, that is very easy to use, and is consistently one of our top rated items that helps contribute to that number one customer usability and satisfaction rating that adaptive planning consistently gets. So here we can have as many different reports as we want, and then we can organize those how we'd like as well. So here's my favorite ones that I you run all the time, as well as I can have personal, personal reports and shared reports that I can share across the organization. So just to quickly show 
a report. Here is a very common operating expense report with my actuals versus working budget and some different variances. You can also use conditional formatting. So here, anything over a certain percent, you know, flag red and some different zoning. So if it's between X and Y, give me a green flag. If it's Z, give me a red flag and draw some attention. Here, we have some different time frames. So I'm looking at my March 2016, as well as my year to date. Now, the great thing about this, just like the visual analytics, is the ability to drill down and explore as well. So I can still leverage this and explore those different values. And I can also hide and bring back up, making this completely inter interactive reports. Now, as I said before, too, uh, the note that we made in that cell flows throughout the entire model and into the reporting as well. So it sticks with it, showing it not only there, but also down here in the footnotes and cell notes. Now, I can also export these. So I can export to Excel or export to PDF and share these reports throughout. Another really great thing I can do is I can actually email these reports out. So for instance, if I want to come in here and pick, maybe I want to send this to my board members and let's do our CFO. And maybe I want to send it to the different sales departments. I can quickly come in here, pick who I want to distribute it to and then email it out. Now what that's going to do is it's going to send an email with the HTML link and allow that end user to click that link, automatically logging them in and taking them to the report to the level that they are allowed to see. So the great thing here is just for example, I could build a P&L report at the total company level, send it out to all the different departments, and they would be able to quickly come in here and see that report at their department level. So as an analyst, that's really great. So instead of, you know, the 17 reports I used to have to create for all the different departments, I can create one report and it's going to distribute that. You can distribute that to all the different departments, really saving you a lot of time, but also making sure that the people that you're sending it to are getting the correct data. Now, just to show how easy it is to build a report, I'll build one very quickly. So this is all a drag and drop environment. No IT needed here, no scripting, uh, none of that to be able to build these reports. You can just quickly come in and drag and drop. So here's my reporting palette, and here are all those items that we've been looking at throughout today. So just for instance here, if I want to grab my operating expenses, I can quickly drag those over. I can also do metric accounts, such as bring in gross margin, or maybe I just want to see uh, different headcounts. So I can bring a headcount in by headcount, maybe by FTE, also metric accounts, other KPIs, employee metrics. I'll bring in another headcount metric and delete this one because that one's not the correct one. So I can quickly come in here and grab those. Also, I'll need some time. So I can grab my, maybe I'll grab my Q1 2016, as well as my full year. I can also look at this by organization if I want, by that hierarchy. And I can grab some different versions to compare. So just for instance here, I've been in my working budget, but I can also grab that what if scenario three that I want, if I want. Also, some calculations. Uh, we've got a couple pre-baked ones, such as subtotal, and maybe I want to take a difference here. And I can also adjust these and name them whatever I would like. So for instance, what if scenario three, I can rechange health benefit increase, as well as this is kind of a long way of saying variance, so I'll just call it var. So I can make completely change these drag and drop them, I can move time above if I want, I can change how I look at these and quickly delete and add however I'd like to do it and quickly run this report. So now I can see the variance of what those impacts are doing to my bottom line and my operating expenses here. Also looking at headcount. 
I can drill down if I want and drill into those numbers, really allowing me to do some really great ad hoc reporting uh, while still be able to looking into those different numbers and where they came from. Another thing we see a lot of our customers do is if they have a board book in their, you know, that they normally send out in Excel and they really like that and they still want to leverage it, we can go in here, bring those in, those templates in, build them in our reporting, and then quickly here, you know, pick what month we want to do and quickly run that report. And here it'll open in Excel. And then based on the month we had, we're going to see the data. So just for instance here, I've got my functional P&L. I've got my March, my year to date, all my formatting that I like is already done. Here, for example, is my balance sheet, a cash flow, different metrics. Also, you can leverage those Excel charts if you want. So big takeaway here is the ability to leverage those different board books if you have them and like them, pull them into the system, and then instead of having to go through and update all of this different data, all you have to do is change month as you go if you want. So very strong uh, report building tool, but again, very easy to use. It only takes 20 or 30 minutes uh, for, of end-user training, and you will be able to build, you'll have those end-users building those different reports. So that's the demonstration today.